My fellow deep thinkers, welcome to Deep Remaining Time. This is episode three, and uh, today I'm going to discuss the news, because uh, I was just reading, <clears throat> as I always uh, do some mid-morning reading, um, every morning really, I, I get on and I, I check my uh, my little Google feed, and Google is fantastic at uh, suggesting articles for me to read, and granted this is all uh, you know, the, the ploy and the plan and the analytics of what Google does, and it's all a part of how Google gets you uh, to use their product and to use their services, um, and it's how they lead you to other people's sites and for advertising purposes and marketing reasons. But the Google feed, the news feed, your feed, um, but my feed in particular, it gives me uh, tons and tons of science-related and uh, astronomy-related news articles to read. And so uh, every morning I'm reading all kinds. Of, but today, today was really interesting because today I got on and there were several um, articles about uh, asteroids. It's pretty incredible. Just the fact that you know, in one night, basically, uh, a bunch of articles came out all about asteroids. So, you know, I read the first one <clears throat> and it had to do with... Uh, Japan actually landing two rovers, really, really tiny rovers, on uh, the surface of this asteroid. Uh, I think it's called Ryu or uh, Ryugu, or I don't, I don't remember what it's called. Um, just cut that. But the asteroid it's called uh, that has some Japanese name. Anyway, that's besides the point. They landed two little rovers on it, and uh, and that made you know pretty big, pretty big news headlines. And so they're waiting for uh, to download pictures back from uh, the rovers to see if they landed safely and that the mission was a success. And uh, their plan is to basically uh, basically shoot a hole into uh, the asteroid, um, let the dust settle, and then collect samples of uh, what's left and send it back. And so that's amazing. That's incredible. And uh, so we'll have you know, really good... Um, research that'll go along with those samples and the things that uh, come and go along with the mission. Uh, the thing that I found just pretty interesting, though, was that this type of news, um, I have to see it on Google. I can't I can't get on um, CNBC in the morning or you can't get on Fox News. Uh, maybe at particular times of the day you can find on Fox News articles uh, like these. But... Um, even your local news, uh, you're not going to find a bunch of stories and stuff about asteroids and scientists, and especially you're not going to find articles about other countries doing fantastic things. I mean, when was the last time NASA did anything that daring? I mean, it's, ab it's absolutely incredible. <clears throat> so, you know, Japan, what if, you know, what if they're a world leader in space? But us Americans, you know, we don't know because our news doesn't feed us that. But so Japan's out there doing some pretty cool things with asteroids. And then I read that uh, JPL, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and NASA uh, came out with a warning um, basically about a, a near-Earth flyby uh, of this asteroid RH-6, I believe. And um, so that asteroid comes by uh, basically every year. Every 16 months, I think, was what it said. And it gets really close to Earth. Its, it's orbit's actually in between Earth and the Moon. Or, uh, sorry, between the Moon and Mars uh, is where its orbit is. And it comes really close. It's actually, I mean, it's not orbiting the Earth. It's orbiting the Sun. But its its orbit is in between the Moon and Mars. and so it, uh, Or Earth and Mars, I should say. It's Earth and Mars. It's between Earth and Mars. And uh, so it, it revolves around, um, and we see it. And they said that by 2115 um, would be one of the last times we'd see it. And I'm guessing that's because it would eventually impact into Earth or it would impact into the sun. I'm not sure. It didn't say. Um, but I scrolled down after I read through this article. It's just a, a silly little warning about a, a, an asteroid that's going to be you know, 2 million miles away from Earth. Um, and, and I guess in an astronomical distance it's actually kind of close. So, but is it really close enough to 
be of concern, you know? I, I don't think it is. And especially for the fact that we've seen it over and over again. So, but anyway, so I scrolled to the bottom of the article, and then in the comments, the first comment um, says uh, something along the lines of, this, this, was a, this was worthless to read, um, there is nothing to warn people here, uh, just a bunch of hype for nothing. <clears throat> and, uh, and he's right. The guy was right. Or, uh, the, the user was right, I should say. And they were right when they said that there is no hype there, because there isn't. And that is interesting. So they put out articles about asteroids that fly by. That's good. But then there's asteroids that blow up in the sky, and meteors that blow up in the sky all the time. And some of them aren't tracked, and sometimes we don't know them. And I'm going to urge you to just do a quick Google search of uh, near-Earth asteroids and just look at an image of it, and you should find from, uh, from a NASA JPL site a picture of uh, the orbit of Earth and our entire solar system and all the known asteroids in the solar system. And, and look at just how densely packed the area is in which the Earth travels through. And there are asteroids all day long that we don't see. And there are asteroids all day long that that, that fly into the Earth's atmosphere and blow up. And, um, you know, it's, that's, that's not, it's never on the news. Never is that on the news. Um, I actually, one time, I love to tell this story because it was just an awesome story. Me and, uh, and like, uh, five of my friends, we were, uh, we were all just heading out one night. Um, it was like a really cool, uh, I think getting into fall time, uh, it was a super clear night and basically, uh, in the town I live in, the, the, the center of the town is kind of down in a valley and, uh, everything around it is kind of surrounds it and is up on a hillside. Um, and so, uh, you're, you're, you're coming down a road and it's, it's pretty up high and you, you can see basically the top of the, the courthouse from this, from this point of view very open sky, almost 360 degree view of the sky at this point. And uh, me and three of my buddies are in the truck, in the truck bed, and we're, we're cruising down the road. We're laughing. It's freezing cold, you know, but we're all having a good time. All having a good time. Music's bumping. Uh, his truck had really nice speakers, so it sounded great. And uh, we were just having a blast, you know, like teenagers. That's just what teenagers do. And uh, we, and like, I literally a, mo a moment's notice we could see everything around us as if the sun was out and, and it was for a, a second a split second that that it happened but it was like the brightest camera flash had gone off and everything around us was illuminated boom we all look up at the sky and there it is a bright white ball of just bright fire that that just erupted instantly and, uh, and within moments, uh, cooled to a point that we couldn't see it anymore, and, and it was gone. But to this day, I think we found <clears throat> one article about that uh, on our local news, about just a few people seeing it. You know, n nobody knew it was coming. Nobody, nobody said anything. What if it was large enough that it didn't burn up, or that it was moving fast enough that it didn't burn up, that instead it landed, you know, 50 miles from my hometown, devastated a, a little a small village out there, or uh, who knows, destroyed farmland, I mean, it could have been bad, could have been good, but nobody knew anything about it, nobody knew it was coming, but we saw it, and it, it was real, and it happened, and a few others did see it too, and just... The news just doesn't deliver uh, the, the things that really are important, I guess. Um, because, yeah, what if that meteor didn't just burn up? You know, it could have crashed. It could have killed people. There's been, in our past, several instances. There was one in Russia in 2013 where uh, an asteroid... Um, I believe it was, I think it was just the shock wave. <clears throat> I'm not sure. It killed 1,400 people. 
I mean, in just a, a moment, a moment's notice, you know, those people perished. And there was no pre-warnings. There was nothing. Nobody knew. So how, how is the news, how am I going to find on Google only articles about near-Earth objects and uh, or asteroids, meteors, things that hurl hurdle past our our uh, our earth and uh they they go unnoticed graham hancock um somebody that's on uh on the on the on youtube he's he's pretty people know him on the internet uh he's a he's just a journalist is all he is and uh he actually gets pretty offended when people call him different things pseudoscientists things that uh, like archaeologist, he's not. He's just a he's just a journalist, is all he is, and uh, and he does fantastic work. I suggest you check him out. He's he's just he does great work, and he has online. You can find just probably just with a quick search, uh, but with his name and uh, probably asteroid at the end of it, he he runs a couple research uh, little groups and. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, basically, he runs an awareness program online to try to get people to understand that uh, there is an actual scare going on here. That this is actually an, an, an issue that uh, that we're not being warned, and that is a problem. But that is such as the news. The news is very biased. Um, I, I actually haven't. Uh, heard anything about this, but I guess there's a uh, a bunch of videos, um, compilations of people's work online uh, that have put together several news stations, and that <clears throat> at one point in the day, I don't know, I'm not sure when this was, sometime this year, all the news stations separately, but at the but scripted, they were all saying the exact same thing as if they were literally handed a script and uh, I think it had something to do with maybe uh, the hurricanes or something I'm not sure but either way it was scripted I mean the news guy guys do can we really even trust the news I mean seriously let's think about it if we've got all types of life-threatening incidents is happening under the radar and nobody bothers to tell us, but, you know, Tiger Woods is so much more important on how good he's doing now, or whatever, <clears throat> Brad and Angelina, it's just like, it's stupid stuff, it, it's pointless stuff, worthless stuff, I mean, I even read an article today about and or how uh, how we're advancing our, our research into fuelless propulsion systems using um, using UNRWA radiation. I mean that this it, it, there is so much more important things going on in this world in 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 the news that isn't reported um, <clears throat> to the general public through the general media, and it's the general public. The, you know, however, you know, however many of us that are here in the in the U.S. and and others across the globe, we are the general public, and the news we get is biased. It's scripted. It's it's either it's either Democratic or it's Republican, and now apparently um, they're all scripted together. So, guys. We need to, we, we seriously need to, to, to take a stand at some point in time against media. It, it, it's getting out of control. You know, the fake news stuff, um, just false reporting, misleading reporting, misinterpreted reporting. It's getting so out of hand that, um, that people's lives are in jeopardy. And... It's, and so what if it's like one person's life or or a business or, or anything? So what? It's not fair. It's it's unjust. 
reporting was supposed to be honest and and it was supposed to be powerful and moving and today it's it's not any of those it's especially not honest i i sound bites and and clips and they're just taking tidbits of what you hear and that's not even the truth that's not the full conversation you're not getting the full context we we see it every single day on the news i mean it's it's endless and it I, it has to stop at some point or or at least it needs to be regulated even then that's not going to help anything i don't know it's a touchy subject i feel like too something you really like probably can't really talk about and people just buy into everything <clears throat> i don't know if it's because there's like stupid people i don't know if it's it's the stupid people out there that you know natural selection will hopefully take care of it one day you know like the, the the people that are that are listening i mean we're we we human beings are are here for more we're here for a purpose we're here for a reason Everybody has their own reasons. Everybody's reasons are different. But one way or another, we're not just here to be played all the time. But yeah, we let it happen. It's so difficult for me to even consider that one day I should have some children. Because um, raising some children currently... And you know, if you're going to raise children right now more power to you, you know, you you are going to be the future, and you're raising the future right now, and hopefully you're doing a good job of it, because our future is so damn important, I mean, it's, it's unreal, we, we're gonna have to just support each other no matter what, in order to get, to get there, <clears throat> but guys, like, you can't just rely on the news and, and the internet and what you're getting. You have to, you really have to be an independent researcher. You you have to be so that you are uh, knowledgeable, so that you've got, you know, the, 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 the details that matter. And, you know, I'm even guilty of not, you know, not knowing all the details. And, and I know a lot of people that think that they know all the details and, it doesn't matter. Really, politics, it doesn't matter either. When I consider the future, politics has absolutely no play in it. I really don't ever think about it. I don't care. I don't think anybody else does either. But we're forced to care by the news and the media. Let's just get over it. Who cares? Maybe it's time to overhaul the government altogether. I mean, we, I feel though, I feel as though that people, were, that we are in a trans, trans, um, a transformation, yeah. We're, we're, we're moving towards something. I don't know what it is. It's either, and I know that other people feel it and that, and that they realize the same thing. I've talked to people about it. <clears throat> and it's interesting because, if other people sense the same thing and, and are aware of what's going on around them, that's good. You know, that's really good. Uh, that means that, that there will be plenty of people around, you know, after this, this transformation happens. And uh, there will be plenty of people around who, uh, who understand the reasons for it and, and what it is. And like I said, hopefully natural selection will just end up taking care of the people that are not suited for life, you know, um, it's horrible and wrong to say, it really is, but I'm, I'm sorry, like, people are ridiculous, and they're not helping us, us that want a, a good future for our families, they're not, just admit it, it's so wrong to say, but admit it, sometimes I swear, people are so scared to talk and explain how they actually feel. I mean, I know I am. 
I mean, it, it is hard for me to explain how I feel to somebody, but when, when I, when I get alone and when I get, you know, sitting down thinking about, about the podcast, I, you know, I, I don't care anymore. And especially for the fact that I'm going to probably put this stuff, uh, you know, onto the internet. I, I really don't care what, what the guy in Indiana thinks. I really don't care what a guy in Wyoming thinks. I really don't care what a guy in uh, California thinks about me, you know. I, I, I don't. It's, it's not about that. It's about understanding more about myself and about others. And about the, the life that surrounds me so that my future and hopefully everybody else's, it's going to be, it's going to be great. I mean, needless to say, but that's because we're all going to work for it. And I, I want to, I don't see no reason not to. It's our future. That's important. I, <clears throat> this is a, going to be a side bit probably, I guess I'll just add this into like the title, but, uh, so I have a, is like I was gonna make a whole another episode about this little thought I had, but um, yeah, you know what? The deeper meaning for today, guys. Yeah, I just I just came up with it. So this this is how this works. I swear, sometimes everything happens for a reason, guys. So I seriously consider that sometimes. Seriously, um, so I had a crazy thought the other day, uh, a deeper thought a deeper meaning that I dived into. So the future, right? And now. The word now and the word present. They mean the same thing, but they are uh, they're just descriptive words for one second or one minute. Or one hour, I suppose. But now, now doesn't actually exist. When will we ever be able to stop the rotation of the earth or the earth around the sun? Uh, You can stop a clock. That does not stop time. No way. Time is everlasting. It's unending until a a collapse of a system. And it's a profound thing for me to think about. And it's true. And I'm sure that you're sitting there listening and you're like, ha now isn't a thing? (laughs) That doesn't make any sense. No, it does make sense. Now is not a thing. It's only the future. Every second we move forward into do doom, 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 every second, it's, it, we're just, I'm sitting here, <clears throat> accelerating into the future, second by second, there is no now, I cannot stop, I can only do things for the future, it's true, and it's, it's the way it is, and it's, it, it needs to be considered, um, and that is the deeper meaning for today, because it's not about now. It's not about what politics is talking about now and what he said now, what she said now, yesterday. <sighs> Who cares? It's things like fuelless propulsion systems that should be talked about constantly. It's things like uh, space. And, uh, and technology and and deeper discussions. I, nobody gives a crap about. Well, people give a crap about Trump, but did people really give a crap about Trump? I mean, come on. If you just ignored him, if you just pushed it aside and said forget, forget about that, forget about all that. They can do whatever petty, stupid crap they want. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to live my life here. And uh, and I'm going to make the best of it. And I'm going to make this future freaking awesome for me. I don't care what the heck that peach guy says or that orange man says or whatever people call him. You know. It, the future is now. 
There is no now. The future is now. Stop worrying about now. Your future, people. So, that is today's deeper meaning. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this little discussion. I'll be back uh, again with another episode. So guys, with every revolution of the earth, let's keep the discussion going. Because that's what deeper meaning time is all about. Exploring the endless thoughts and curiosities we all have every day. And discover all the deeper meanings time has to offer. My name's Evan. Thanks for listening.